Hi, this is B from Sorcery Soap, and today we're going to make some little teddy bears. And I wanted to show you mostly um, uh, the variety of faces and things you can make with this, but we'll walk through just one, which probably this guy, or we could do this guy. Let's do this guy. He's pretty cute. So you can see him. He's upside down. And some of these have little patches on them. You can see the face is a little bit different. And then he's leaning back with his hand over his, his little tummy. And his eyes are a little bit different. He's different color, of course. His face is different. He has a little cocked head. So let's move these aside and we'll make this guy here. So you could examine him. So before I start, we're going to use uh, gold or what I call sometimes light gold if it's a little bit lighter, but mostly butterscotch. So that's this color here, butterscotch gold. And it's a little bit lighter than butterscotch, but I don't know why I just started calling it butterscotch. So that's what I call it. And um, we're going to start with this part here, which you could see is just a circle. It's just a sphere and then we'll add his components. So his head's round and his belly is round. And we're gonna start with his belly first. So you want um, a soap dough similar to this consistency that you're gonna want for the soap dough to start this project. So let's make a little round sphere for him. And the reason I make them this size, by the way, is so that they'll fit on top of a soap because my soaps are about that big. So I just have a rule of thumb in my mind about what it looks like, about how big. And you can make these any size you want. And let's put them him here, there. And do you see this spot right here? I got this tabletop thinking it wouldn't be so reflective or it just sort of a neutral color. It's, it's a gray tabletop, by the way. And it, it is not what I thought it to be. And, and I thought it was sealed enough and I got a spot of lye or soap on there that I didn't clean up and then I tried to fix it and it, but it's dead in the center of my tabletop. So there's nothing I can do. I even painted over it to try and match the gray color. It didn't work. Anyway, so I use that as my rule of thumb now. So, okay, so there's his, there's his body. I'll make his head. Let's see, that looks a little bit too small. I want his head just a tick bigger, I think. And he's a little bit, when I put it on, he's a little bit oval, like that. Okay, let me put some water on that. And if you've watched my videos in the past, you know that I spill my water almost every time. So I try to put it, I don't know. I thought, why do I always reach across the screen to get my water? And I realized it's because I oftentimes spill it. Okay. So let's make his face. So that's just a little, a little circle and then squish that down a little bit oval. And I usually make a little cut right there to make his sort of muzzle or so I don't have to work so hard to make it look like something. I just do that. And put that right there. And you can do this part in different orders if you want to make his face first and then stick it together. but this is the order that I'm doing it today. There. Oh, and it looks like I'm gonna need some brown for his nose, so hang on just a sec. Okay, so now his nose, I can see, isn't, see how nice and round that is? This one's a little bit too, let me squish him down a little bit. Okay, and let's see, where did I just 
to see that. Right there's a little tiny fuzz. Okay. So now that I sprayed some alcohol on him, he has to dry a bit. So we'll work on his legs. So his legs are a little bit bigger. And some of these I'll show you, let me see. Okay, so this guy, I made little toes in the bottom of his feet and I was like, yeah, that's just too much trouble. I can't be bothered. So I decided not to do that, but you're welcome to take the time to do that. So that looks almost like Yeah, that'll do right there. Okay. And that's going to take a second to dry. So we want it spread just a bit. So you can see the angle of it. Yeah, this guy needs to be a little bit. He's not quite there yet. So once you make one, then you can keep it and it's easier to copy yourself. And you can see it for what it is. And when I'm Oftentimes when I'm creating new things, I, I don't have something to copy. And so I just do something and see if I like it and then keep moving with it until I figure out what I like about it. So the reason I smash the, t the end of it is because I want it smooth and I don't want to futz with it. So let's see, is that, that looks a little bit too big. And I can't necessarily move, make that with my fingers like I can with smashing it like that. It's a little, still a little too big. Okay, there we go. So we'll match that up. Out there. A little bit haphazard. There we go. See, and if I cut it and then stick it right on, it's it's got like a the soap dough has more of an adhesive quality to it, so you don't have to use so much water. But you want to use a little bit because if you just do that part, oftentimes they'll just pop right off later on because there's not enough surface for them to grab onto. No, I don't mean it like that. Not enough uh, change in the surface, I guess. I don't have to get too complicated about it, but whatever. Okay, so let's do his, we'll do his eyes last, I think, and his nose last. So his arms. Nah, I think we'll work on his eyes next because I don't want it. I don't want him to be fiddly. So this is the size I use for his eyes about there, but maybe a little bit bigger. This one here, yeah. So I'll do this, and then that. And so you can see what I did. I put it right above his nose. So the eye placement's important. And still, I think I got them a little too close. Only because it makes them, it makes them cute or not cute. Now, see this guy, he's all right, but I think his eyes are a little buggy. 
and his nose isn't big enough, like it's not wide enough. There's something a little bit off about his face. I'm not quite sure, but it doesn't look like that one. And then, of course, this guy, I did this too and made a big nose. So anyway, we'll move forward. So I want a little bit of black for this. Now I have some that are made. Maybe I have a size that's made. Nope, I don't. No sizes that are made. Looks good to me. Okay, great. Now let's do his arms. And move on, move on. Okay, so that looks good. And then we want to measure it. Oops. His leg, his leg isn't dry yet. That's remedied easily there. takes a little bit of being careful, but this can help stabilize. So what I'm doing is I'm sticking all this on the backside right here. All right. and that leg isn't secure, so that's okay. Because this is really a big issue is like when you're making a bunch of these and they start to get all slidey like this, what do you do? You get want to keep moving forward. You don't want to leave them dry, right? And firm soap oftentimes, firmer oftentimes will behave this way. So you want to mash them together a bit. Let me show you the back of him looks like that. Nobody's going to see it. You're going to put it on top of the soap, right? It's going to stick and adhere to the top of the soap. Okay. So let's get him all squared away. And then we're going to let him dry for a second. And we'll be back. Because if we don't, he'll keep moving around. And then it'll be more frustrating than it's worth. Put him in position the way we want him, and we're going to put a little water on him and let him fully dry, and then I'll be back to show you how to finish him up. Okay, so I let him set for a bit, and then we're going to put his eyes in. There. Let's make a little nose for him. Get that part done.
This is a little darker than the other, but I think I like it better. Let's see. And you've watched other videos of mine, you see that I make like, on the foxes, I make like a little round, I mean a little triangle nose. This guy, I like to have a little softer nose. Just a little round one, sort of oval. Oops, he's a little crooked. There we go. That's pretty cute. So I was thinking about something the other day, and what I was thinking about is the word magic, and how that word can be tricky sometimes. And I was thinking about the different types of magic and one of the things that came to mind was that some magic is a sleight of hand. Some magic is meant to trick you. And you can tell that magic because, well for me, I could tell that magic because I feel foolish afterwards. Not all the time, but sometimes I feel a little foolish. Like, how did I not see that? Or, and so then I wonder at the intention of the person performing the magic. And I wonder at why they would want me to feel foolish. And some of it's innocuous, but there's quite a lot of stuff happening now that is meant to make us feel foolish and is meant to trick us. And the thing about what I talk about, create creative magic, because I want to put it to myself so that I have a level of responsibility to what I create, so the thing about what I think about for myself is, am I trying to trick anybody? The answer, no. Well, what am I trying to create? Well, that's exactly it. I think creativity in itself is, is a form of magic. And the reason I think that, and the reason that I started with this idea of sorcery soap was, I was completely delighted when I figured out that I put sodium hydroxide, water, and fats together, and it makes a usable product. And that in and of itself was like, wow, that's crazy sorcery, that's magic. And then I started drilling into that a bit deeper, and I realized that creativity really is the deeper part of what I try to, to share and help other people with. And creativity is, taking an idea that does not exist, may never have existed, in a lot of my creations, never existed, and that you cannot touch, and the only person that sees it is you. And you bring that idea into this world in a three-dimensional way that causes delight. So that kind of magic when you can create a ripple in the world that continues to go out and out and create delight. That kind of magic to me is what the world needs more of. I don't care if it comes through soap. It doesn't matter what it comes through because the intention clarifies the end result. And the intention keeps what you're creating to a certain standard. So for example, I couldn't, I couldn't create that ripple effect if my intention was to cause ill will. I mean, the ripple will definitely be there, but it wouldn't be a positive type of thing. It wouldn't be creating more good than harm for sure. Because my intention is to create, to share the delight that I find in soap. Anyway, I, I have, I thought maybe, I just brought it up here because I'm sort of working the idea out. I thought maybe I'd make a blog post about that or a longer video if, if anybody was interested in that sort of idea because I don't see too many people in, I mean in the soap world, but in the world in general, talking about that. And you know, we've been tricked into thinking that Ma all magic is bad in some degree, in some areas, in some worlds, some, some people think that. And 
all I think of it is is it's like saying all I don't know all wheels all tools are bad and it's part of our gift I think as being a human being to be able to imagine something that isn't here oops I just squished his ear to be able to imagine something that isn't here and make it into three dimensions and then bring it to this world that's part of a gift I don't see zebras doing that I don't see dogs doing that I see us doing that and I think as well as being a gift it's also a responsibility to make sure that we're creating more good than harm and gosh that's such a big big topic because somebody can go and want to save elephants for example and cause more disruption to the ecosystem because they're wanting to just to save the elephants and they can't think bigger and bigger even though they try so then I asked myself the brightest and the best of us have screwed this up so many times so how do we fix this and I always go back to intention and we, we rarely ever talk about that either intention like what is my intention if my intention is cause more good than harm then almost always the rest of it can be fixed almost always and even if at the base level I could possibly clarify my own intention truly in my heart and set my own ego aside and say is this going to cause more good than harm to me start for first for me if I could take responsibility for that and then will that ripple effect be of a positive nature and I can't always control it once it's away from me but all I can do is take care of my own my own self in the best way possible without the ego and anyway before I go into that too much there's a lot to think about for sure and so that you know that I do think I write a lot of words I think a lot and um, I know that those of you that follow and are on board with sorcery soap and are curious and interested in all this you're thinkers too so I I was listening to a podcast the other day and she's so mad and she was treating she's talking to me like I was the problem but I was listening to her and I understood that she was mad but she's talking to me essentially and I thought treat me like an adult treat me like I'm your peer at least but speaking to me like I'm part of the ill-intentioned people isn't going to isn't going to ennoble me it's not going to help me feel part of your tribe and and then I reflected back on myself and I know that people have you know done dirty underhanded things towards me along this path just in the soap community which is shocking and I've done the same I've gotten mad and I've put it out there and I don't know that you know it's part of the process and I and I keep trying to you know make things in the world that I can sleep with at night yeah this little guy I'm pretty sure I could sleep with that with that on my conscience tonight <laughs> so and I, I reflected that back on myself and I thought I don't want to be that person I want to clarify that I'm super grateful for everybody that's interested in soap dough and interested in being creative and putting their good intentions into the world no matter what that looks like and that I'll do my best from now and into the future that I don't mistreat you in that way I don't want to be like that person but there are a lot of people in this soap community and that are have become my friends and that are definitely followers of sorcery soap and interested in soap dough and all that and interested in living a little bit more of a creative life I just I want to honor you and there are plenty of people that I want to be like and sort of embrace embrace qualities in you that I could bring into myself so anyway you just saw me make this little heart and now we're going to put it on his hiney let's see in a maybe not maybe I'll put it oh, I keep squishing his ear look at that that's why you got to let it set just a bit let's see let's put it on his foot 
that seems like an innocuous place. His hiney, his hiney quarters don't look like they would be, like, see, this one, let's see, this one is a good place to put it. But this, yeah, I don't think I want to put it between his legs, so I'll just put it on his foot. Anyway, thanks for listening to me. I don't always talk on these because I don't feel like I really have much to say, but today I felt like I did have something to say. And, you know, when we sit and do this right here, we, we do these, our minds go in a lot of different places and that's just where mine happened to go in the last few days. And I've been working this idea out a bit. I think that it feels nice to, to talk about that with you. So there's one more little thing I wanna to talk to you about. And I'm gonna try, hopefully you can see this. If you can see, see this little bubble right here? see there's a little soap bubble right there so that's why I spray with alcohol when I'm done because it breaks those little bubbles up and it has to be when you're done because if you do it too soon you can't restick soap dough if I put alcohol in here and I can't it's gonna be really hard to stick the soap dough on because alcohol creates a layer that keeps things separate that's another topic for another day but right here I didn't spray with with uh, alcohol and that little soap bubble from me taking a little bit of water and putting that eye on there left it and this little guy I think is maybe two three years old possibly or maybe a little older anyway so that is a little bit of an insight and maybe to help you understand like what you want it to the finished product you want it to look like so um, so I don't want this to go on super long, so I'm going to stop this and then I'll make another video for this guy. So I hope that helped and I, and I hope it, I just hope it helped. So there you go. Thanks for watching.